This was the beginning of our new journey as a film production company. So the budget was 5,000 euros. I think I found all everything we need for 2,000 euros. This is what I've dreamt of for so long, finally. <laughs> Still throughout this whole process, we were editing a video and then going on a shoot and then building a bit on the studio. It was a, a pretty hectic period. It's been one week and we're still not <laughs> finished with the show. We have to finish uh, the office uh, so we can start building the studio. This was, uh, I think, the coolest part of the whole place. So, the film studio. The film studio was a big part of the new office. So, the goal was to make the most flexible and professional studio in the center of Oslo, which means we had to really plan everything from, from scratch. So, to begin with, uh, I made a plan of what had to be done. I, I did actually make a 3D render of how I was visualizing it. So, we really wanted to focus on making uh, it great sounding, uh, we wanted to have tons of lamps uh, for all kind of productions and Anders really wanted a cyclorama which is this endless infinity wall. I think it would be more easy to do creative stuff and also uh, change camera angles if we have two walls that are connected in a cyclorama wall. And we were thinking of doing it ourselves um, at first building the cyclorama but we decided to make somebody that actually knows how to do it, do it. So we could actually work on other projects instead of just being in the studio, building. Sometimes you have to spend money on getting help, of course. We moved in uh, on the 1st of March and uh, I was thinking maybe like in May we should uh, be pretty finished with the studio. That was not happening because uh, things takes a lot of time and just waiting for the carpenter to do the cyclorama took way too long so uh, and it was kind of frustrating because we had this great space to create videos but it was full of materials okay the cyclorama is almost done. We only need to paint the floor. It feels so strange like looking into the corner because I can't see the corner. And that's, that's, then it's good, <laughs> good uh, craftsmanship. Especially this corner where you got this car and this car together. I think it took like eight days. But you said, I think we, should, we would probably use two weeks, us two, to make this. Yeah. And I was like, is it that hard? Maybe five days? <laughs> yeah, I think we would use maybe even more than two weeks. And the thing is that we had now already invited a lot of clients, a lot of uh, people in the film industry and friends to this opening party because we had to do it early so people actually can come. You know, people are so busy in, uh, nowadays with everything. So we invited to this date and we only had a couple of months to finish up everything. So we just had to get started. One of the most important aspects of a good film studio is the option to, to light it in different ways. So I wanted to put the lights in the ceilings. Uh, this is something that's somewhat common in photo studios, not that common in video studios for some reason, but um, this is great to, to get the lamps off the floor, uh, not having that many C-stands um, standing around. Our ceiling were like 10 meters long, so uh, it was difficult to find something that was long enough. Um, so we really needed these custom dimensions, we wanted a, a projector in the middle, so we needed kind of two separate areas. It was quite complicated, so that's, we decided to go the DIY route and make something uh, really custom. So this is actually for stable doors, you know, where the horses are, you have these big doors. So I got like a, a metal workshop to kind of custom fit a spigot on the end of the, the cars and stuff like that, so we can attach uh, the lights to this. He also custom fit this so we could uh, make a rail 
onto the rail. We're gonna mount them in the ceiling. It's gonna be scary actually, we don't know what's up there. This building is more than 100 years old, so there's like, in between the studs, it's like dirt. Yeah. This is scary. Will we, will we be able to find a place to screw the screw? <laughs> if you want to say it that way. Looks okay. <laughs> so back quite a few years ago, I was in contact with this uh, company back in my hometown, uh, Fredrikstad, which is uh, the most beautiful town in Norway. They were making really high-end projector for simulations. So I thought it would be really cool to put up a projector in the studio because this is something we had requested a few times in our old studio and also with you know virtual productions uh, getting big uh, we were thinking that this could be sort of a lower end solution to that uh, so i sent an email uh, asking if they wanted to collaborate and they uh, were really keen on you know uh, learning more about the film industry and virtual production so uh, we got this uh, projector in the studio it's it's pretty beefy it can do 240 frames per second uh, and it's quite bright um, and it's heavy. It weighs like 30 kilos. So we didn't want it to, uh, to fall down or, or, or fall down in some client's head. Morten is back from Canada. So you had to do all the accounting. Yeah, none of you did it, so. <laughs> gonna work. Yes, got it. So this projector is like 30 kilos. So I tried to figure out a way to like lift it up. We rented this. It's like a dry wood uh, lift. En centimeter, halv centimeter, bit litt. Du kommer til å kjenne at den treffer noe. There's like, in between the studs, it's like dirt. This is scary. This projector is like 30 kilos. To fall down or, or fall down in some client's head. We're gonna experience a lot with uh, virtual production with the projector and uh, we've done some tests and it looks pretty cool. So stay tuned uh, for some more videos uh, about that. It's coming along very nicely. Mark has done a great job. So Aperture Lightstorm 600C. We have those in these arms in addition to some 600X and stuff. For many years we have been in contact with Aperture and uh, they sponsored, sponsored some earlier videos we had. And I talked with them about the studio. Aperture said that we want to have a show room in Oslo. So actually we made a deal with Aperture that if we can uh, borrow or get some of your lights for the studio, uh, we can arrange Aperture uh, days here at the studio in Oslo. We got three uh, Novas 600C. We can uh, light up the whole cyclorama. Oh! Ah! There we are. And they have this app. Uh, called Sidus Link, where you can control all the lamps wirelessly, choose which color you want, and add different effects, and make groups. Sitter of us? My Mortenas is stuck. It's gonna be really easy to control the lamps. You don't need to like climb up and down all the time to adjust them. You can just use the app, which is really, really flexible and perfect for us. What's also good about having RGB lamps uh, lighting up the cyclorama is that we don't need to have a lot of backdrops anymore, which we need to like put up, roll down every time we used it. 
uh, which did take some time. But with RGB lamps, we can actually create the backdrops ourselves uh, without adding any paper. We can also create green screen. And then there's another aspect of the studio which is really important, and that's the sound. Let's go. I talked a little bit with Marius, our sound master. I call him sound master because he's a cool name. The best way to block the sound from coming from the streets is to cover our windows with something solid. So I thought the best solution was to have like a drywall that's around 12 millimeter thick and some plywood that was around six millimeter and connected with some studs and some isolation that was meant for soundproofing. I'm not a carpenter, but I think I will manage to do this. That was a quite easy project. It's quite different than the Sacrorama wall, so I thought I, I could do that. <laughs> oh, nice! It's taking so much time. It's taking so long. Okay. The thing now is that this is quite heavy because of the drywall. One thing I thought was important was to be able to carry them out and into the window whenever we wanted. Because some clients, they want to have um, video shot where we see the windows actually to create more of a living, re living room feeling. When I made the sound panels from the, for the windows, I also reused some of the isolation we had from, from the previous studio. It feels good reusing the stuff we have. To avoid the reflection of the sound in the studio, we also hanged up some uh, sound plates, I think it's called, to absorb the sound. Uh, we had some from the previous office, which we used again. We just had to paint them a little bit and make them a little bit more good looking. And we tried to like cover, so to say, every corner in the studio with uh, sound panels. We also glued some absorption uh, sound panels to the ceiling. In addition to that, we wanted to have uh, these big uh, carpets around the studio so that we could uh, block light, we could block sound. I wanted it to be uh, on rails in the ceiling so that it it's really easy and quick to set it up. And the corners are like this, so it's a nice like radius, so we can drag the curtains all around the curtains for, of course, blocking the light from the window, but also uh, to help uh, with the better sound. I contacted a, a company here in Norway that works a lot with like stages and stuff, and they had this uh, custom made uh, woolen carpets made for us. Uh, it was somewhat expensive, but uh, it, they turned out really well. The last thing we wanted to do in the studio was to create some, some walls on wheels, like that we could roll around the studio to create uh, different sets really quickly. It was just a couple of weeks until opening party and we realized that the walls, the, the flats on wheels, we weren't able to make it, it would take just too much time and we had other things to do. But suddenly, I don't know how, it's just so, such luck. So here we have Aaron. Hiya. <laughs> And it seems like perfect timing because you guys were just dying on. There's a guy called Aaron from UK. He sent us an email asking, hey, I'm in Norway for a week now uh, and I make, uh, I, I make sets. I make uh, walls on wheels with windows. Like, are you serious? Yes, and I want to help you guys because I've seen the YouTube channel and is there anything I can help you guys with? I do it for free. It's just two weeks into the opening and he's, he can actually make this, these walls within one week. That was, I don't, you know, the life is just, yeah. So we're gonna make a couple of flats on wheels. There's gonna be one with a window, one without, and they're gonna be double-sided so that you can paint up both sides 
and then quickly turn around a production site. Oh, yeah. So you head up on the yellow. Nice. What do you think, Morten? Probably be better if I did it myself, but it's it's pretty decent. <laughs> I mean, the van was pretty good, so I, I, I'm sure you could have done it yourself. This is amazing. Yeah. And he did all this in like a day, a day and a half. Yeah. yeah. Good job. <laughs> I was not. We were not expecting this. We have an opening party of the of the studio next week on Friday. We were thinking about having some kind of make some scenes here at the opening party to show what we can do. Yeah. So to have them this ready for that that party would be awesome. That was amazing how to see someone professional. I, I had the ideas in my head and I think they were decent, but compared to the work he was doing, it was uh, it was pretty crap, I'm sure. Um, and the pace he had, how, how quickly he worked, it, it was amazing. So now we can easily paint them, create living rooms, bedrooms, which is something that clients want all the time. And uh, maybe that was why Aaron wanted to help us, because he felt that, you know, he, he liked what he saw on YouTube. So don't be afraid of share your, to share your knowledge to other people for free. Suddenly, I don't know, you end up working with someone or someone is helping you back. It was just one day until the opening party. People from the business, earlier clients, new clients, uh, friends, colleagues are going to come to this opening party. And we have said it's going to be the most flexible and professional studio in the center of Oslo. Just to brag a little bit, of course, you need to do that. But we need to deliver. We need to not make them disappointed when they come. And it's just one day until the opening party and it looks like a mess here now. So here we're going to make uh, C-stand uh, mounts, so we can have all the C-stands behind here. So it needs to be clean, it needs to be finished. Yeah, so we're hurrying up now. Four hours people are coming and there's so much stuff in here <laughs> and so messy uh, okay we just have to hurry up yeah it's gonna be a long day we just came uh, back from a music video shoot and there was a lot of stuff we had to carry <laughs> p.m. The moving party is tomorrow at 1. You think we'll make it? Yeah, but this reminds me of the <laughs> last opening party. <laughs> We're so tired. Oh. 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 You know, sometimes you just... What are we doing? <laughs> because none of the people coming tomorrow know about this. It's just something we will prepare for them. And we don't know, we haven't done it before, so we don't know how it will end up. Yeah, we'll make it, but <clears throat> we'll have to work hard. If, if you're happy and you know, we clap your hands. Oh yes, but this looks so good. The sound walls, they work so well. I, I don't hear anything from the streets. Tomorrow we need to go to bed now. It's late, um, but tomorrow we get some help to clean all this. Hopefully tomorrow everything works. The technical stuff, see you tomorrow. One hour left. <laughs> All man on board. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes.
And then it was the opening party. Minutes before the doorbell rang, we were able to finish up. We also wanted to, of course, impress with uh, using the projector, using the Sakurama wall, using the flats, using our camera, try to imitate kind of a living room feeling. We didn't have much time to do it, but we managed to uh, put up something uh, so people could uh, look at. And I think it, people got impressed. They were like, when they came into the studio, it was like, whoa, well, this is exciting. It looks like a set, like a, a real studio. <laughs> This is fantastic. The set walls there with a the window. So yeah, excellent. <laughs> it looks good. I'm glad to finally have it finished. We use, they have a new studio, the best in Oslo. The moving party was a huge success now I'm just really looking forward to focusing on work and being able to work in this new office. I think it's turned out so nice. We have all the C-stands ready to go. We have the lights in the ceiling, which is included if you rent the studio. Um, you just bring yourself and uh, your camera, or you can rent the camera even, and you're ready to shoot. So um, I think this is, uh, has become a really unique place, a unique studio, uh, and yeah, I'm really proud of it. it. It looks great. Ah, finally we can relax. Finally we can go back to work, go back to making films and not just use all our time cleaning, painting, building, which is not actually our main job. <laughs> but it was worth it, it was worth it. We saved money doing this uh, ourselves and we also had fun even though it also was really challenging. You feel more connected with office in a way. You feel that you were much more a part of this office uh, in a way. So when we come here every morning, we're gonna feel that, yes, it was hard work. And that's also why I really, I, I really enjoy my day at the office. So if you're looking for a film studio with endless possibilities, go into oslofilmstudio.com and send me an email. I'm looking forward to hear from you.